Our guest today is Ventura's own Steve Cook, who will be talking about the joy of art and painting. A supremely talented artist, Steve has brought Ventura County to life. His paintings range in Rome from California landscapes to seascapes to surf culture to old cars, old farmyard, old barns. I hate to say old people, but whatever the painting, there's sort of an inherent beauty there that's hard to put your finger on. Steve's paintings have been exhibited in galleries in Ojai, Santa Barbara, Carpinteria, and Ventura, and also local restaurants and surf shops and really kind of fun. Several of his paintings have been featured on wine labor, late labels for Discovery's Vineyard and also Firestone Vineyard. You can see more of his work at stevecookfineart.com. Welcome to the show, Steve. Oh, thanks, Ken. Oh. We, go, we go back a few years. We do go back surfing, a few yeah. years. Yeah, I think I first met you in your sort of your milieu or whatever. You were probably gathering thoughts for a painting. Yeah, well, you do a lot of work, Al. Tell, tell our, our viewers sort of about the sort of paintings that you do. Because well, my main subject matter is basically the, the environment around me. And living at the beach, a large part of that environment is, is uh, surfing and beach culture and and uh, that's that's a that's been a traditional part of my of my work and then I have specialized with a lot of Ventura city of Ventura subject matter try I always try to get at, at an angle of something that's familiar to everybody but that's never been used before so um, if you if you look at a lot of my paintings, you'll see like two tree hill or you see you know, downtown, you see the Ventura Pier or whatever, and it's, but it's from an angle that's, that's different, you know, that's not quite, you know, the standard picture that you always get when you, when you do Ventura scenes. And uh, so I do that, and, and I'm, I've, I've always been fascinated with cars ever since I was a little kid. I used to draw cars when I was a kid. So I love old cars. I like cars that are rusty and, and cars that are parked in the weeds and covered with weeds and dirty and rusty. And uh, I like fancy cars too. I've done a, a lot of commission work of, of uh, sports cars and stuff like that. And then I, in the last few years, I've really been trying to branch out into other areas. I did some, some uh, livestock, some cattle, uh, uh, calves in a field. I've been working uh, with, with children and pets and people and just people, people, you know, doing things in life. You know, I, my recent painting I did was a father and a son out fishing on the pier. Oh, you know, nice. I, I had my little camera. And I snuck a picture of him fishing, and it's it's really kind of a touching, touching little painting. And so I, it's kind of a broad spectrum. Um, people always recognize my work. They recognize my style. It does um, have a trademark or a like sort uh, of signature that grabs you. Yeah. It kind of. Uh, Good or bad, I don't know. You know, people say, it's "Oh, that's good. that's Steve Cook." I mean, you know his stuff. Um, but it's it's been I've been blessed. I've been blessed to be able to do this. Uh, um, I had a job just like everybody else, working in a uh, in manufacturing for thirty years or whatever. And I worked at a local company called Vetco, and then I worked in a, uh, we had a company that I worked at for seventeen years. The best job I ever had was in the aquarium business. And but then you have to give all that up. I mean, there's a lot of people who would like to be an artist, Steve, but are afraid. You know, it's a, it's a huge risk. Well, so what advice would you offer those people who I might have a great job, have a good like job. you had with the aquarium business, and all of a sudden they think, you know, but what I really want to do, what be, would you tell them? You've got to be lucky. <laughs> well, you've got to have a dream, and you've got to pursue your dream. But I was, I was fortunate that I was with this company long enough that they got bought by Wall Street, and the Wall Street guys were, they, they knew everything, so they, they basically shut it down, sent everything to China, laid off, laid off three or four hundred people, and paid me to go away. And that was a golden opportunity for me because I had been painting more and more aggressively over four, four or five years. It, in 1997, we bought this house at the beach. 16. And that's uh, at Pierpont Beach. At Pierpont right? Beach, right. And we bought the house, and, and I hadn't done any art. I'd done artwork as a kid. I you know, was a painter and, and drawing in high school and stuff. But I, I kind of neglected that after 
after coming back from the Peace Corps. We were, my wife and I were in the Peace Corps in Jamaica. Uh, we came back from the Peace Corps with a baby, so I had to get a job. So it was basically do that for 25 years. Was the art always sort of stewing beneath, or is that a little? Yeah, I, I would do things like I did a I did a drawing of Bob Marley and entered it in the fair, won first prize. You know, and that was my one art endeavor for 15 years. <laughs> and then, but we bought we bought this house. It was a 1927 Tudor style house, and we we moved in. And the first weekend when we were there, we were there. I I uh, I looked at the mailbox and said, you know, it'd be kind of cool as a paint a picture of a surfer on the mailbox. So I, I did, and that was the start of it. And then I started doing cartoons on surfboards for the kids, yeah. and then uh, graduated to doing actual paintings on surfboards. I, people would bring me old beat up paintings, beat up surfboards. I've seen those, they're fantastic. And yeah. I'd, I'd do a painting on them, and, and then uh, I was lucky to get to, to hook up with a guy named Gerald Zwerz, who's a local Ventura artist, very talented, and he ran a gallery. Um, called uh, North Wind Gallery over by, by Vaughn's in, in the, at the beach. And uh, he, uh, he put my surfboards in there and, and actually sold one. And that was the beginning. Was that a shock to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, I, I have no idea who bought it. And I have no idea where it went. It was a surfboard I did of some guy surfing at Mavericks. And it was, it was on a, an old Dennis Ryder uh, trifling that I had. That, and uh, that was the beginning. And from there on, I painted about 30 surfboards, uh, sold almost all of them, wow. or did deals. I did deals with, with Ventura Surf Shop to get new surfboards. I, I painted surfboards, of, uh, and, and they showed them there and gave them to Blinky and people like that. Uh, and then from there, I went back to school. I said, you know, I, want, I like doing this. So I went So back. that was for art, obviously. Yeah, I went yeah. back to Ventura College. Okay. And, and would you recommend that for people? Yeah, I mean, do you think... Here's the deal. Here's the deal. I, you can, to be a painter, you have to, there's two things you have to know. One is you have to be able to draw. And that's, that's the gifted part. Okay, I've been gifted with drawing. I can draw people. I can draw things. I spent hours and hours in school drawing waves. You know, uh, That's the talent. Then there's the second thing, which is physics. And physics involves mixing the colors, how colors react to each other, mixing paint, which is chemistry, which colors dry, which paints dry faster, which, which paints are transparent, which paints are opaque. So all these things. And the drawing part, you can get trained in that somewhat. I've seen people that take class after class, and unfortunately, they can't draw a lick. But then I've been with people uh, uh, where you, it's natural born talent. Um, so I took drawing. The color part, sort of the academic part, is that the part you'd recommend that people that, well, if you, if, learn a little bit about the paint, mixing and the yes, light and the tone? You because to, your paintings have this sort of you have to know that. aura to them. That you have to know which colors work together, which you know, which complementary colors, which, which colors don't work together, and how colors react on your eye. I mean, you see two colors, uh, purple and, and yellow. You know, they're going to react a certain way on the how you, in the in the chemistry inside your eye. So. Um, that's what I did. I went back to Ventura College and took, took uh, drawing classes at first and then painting classes. And I was very fortunate to have been with some really, really good instructors. So is that another good thing? I mean, if you can, if you're an aspiring artist, to try as best you can to connect somehow with somebody, mentors? Or well, whatever. absolutely, absolutely. I had two. And your home address is? <laughs> No, seriously, though. Well, I, is that a good thing to do? I think it's a very good thing. And, and, and I was fortunate. I studied with under uh, Connie Jenkins, who's a realist painter. Uh, I think she's retired from teaching now, but she lived out in Malibu, and she was just amazing. And that's, that's where I got the realism part of my painting. And I studied uh, with Deborah McKillop, who was at Vintner College also. She's, she's very good with color and very good with the techniques there. And then I studied with uh, Hiroko Yoshimoto, who is uh, uh, a brilliant painter and uh, the best teacher I've ever had. She, would, she was able to, to tell you, you, know, you get critiqued on your work, and she would tell you what was wrong with your work without breaking your heart. Oh, and she that's was, a gift. And there was a, just this zen. And zen. And I, whenever I see her, I always walk up to her and give her a hug oh. because she was, she's what was great. Because actually, that's an interesting point, Steve, but I mean, a lot of being an artist, I suspect, 
is not getting your spirit crushed oh, and believing yeah. in yourself, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. so how would you, how do you, main, I mean, obviously you're a successful professional now, but for people who think, you know, honestly, it's the biggest well, battles you, you up here sometimes. You can't be afraid. Yeah. You can't, you got to be able to put it out there and you want to put it out there and if, if people like it, great, and if they don't like it, um, then don't put that one out anymore, <laughs> you know. Um, I was fortunate with, 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 with going to school and then I, I started actually, I, all three teachers said, you should be doing this professionally. You should be an artist. You should be, this should be what you're doing. Oh, I had to and good. so that got me started. And I actually started a business in 2003 as an artist. And I went, I would, I did a lot of painting and I've been, been professional artist since then. Now I was still working, so it was like a, I had a day job and I was doing the art. But now it's full time. Well, it's been full time yeah. since 2006. Okay. It's, so it can be done. It can be done. Um, I was very fortunate, A, to get a severance package, <laughs> which is good, always good. And B, um, I was fortunate that we were able to, to, to build a studio. I have a studio. My studio is in the back of my house. And we took this Tudor-style house and built a Tudor-style studio on the back of the house with a skylight. And it's, it's the greatest place in the world to work. And it's, I've had that for 10 years. So that's about how long we've been serious on this thing. And then I studied. I took workshops with, with some good painters, uh, Ken Oster who is a famous surfing painter, very loose, impressionist painter. He got me painting, going in certain directions. And then I studied with uh, a guy named George Strickland, who's a Southwest landscape artist, uh, does a lot. Both of those painters I started with, up, I, I, Ken Osher was in Taos, New Mexico, and George Strickland was in Santa Fe. Okay. And that, those are both beautiful places, which sort of, I mean. I'd live in, you're, the, you're, if I didn't live at the beach in Ventura, I would live in Santa okay. Fe. Okay, but in our, is our area, I mean, you could do what you do elsewhere, but is this well, for this you is, kind of, with this your is where beach we paintings yeah. and your surf paintings, I mean, is there a better place to do this than where we live right now? Uh, Santa Fe. <laughs> but not but, for the beach. Culture, but not for right? the beach, right. And, and one of the major influences Ken Osher, obviously, he's from Laguna Beach, but we, we, I stay with him in Taos. But he's obviously a, a surfing-influenced also kind of guy. But I was also, stu I studied with, uh, with uh, Ovanis Barbarian, who's a Russian painter up in, up in Idaho. And that was, that was interesting. That was, that was more of a, uh, a lot of outdoor painting. But my favorite artist that I studied with was a guy named, named uh, John Comer. John Comer's from, well, last he's been, lived in Cayucos and Santa Barbara, and he's one of the, oh. one of the Oak Group painters, and he's, he was a student of, uh, I forget, but he, his, his painting style, he, probably the biggest influence on mine, he got me to where he does a lot of, of underpainting using complementary colors. Like, for instance, I do all my painting uh, on a, Earth orange earth tone canvas. I don't paint on a white canvas. So you paint and you you paint your and the the greens, all the, the foliage and stuff, do that in red first. That's the cop that's the opposite color of the actual green that so when you do when you go back over and you're over the orange and you're painting, you have little holes where the, the orange comes through, or you do the red, the, it comes through the green. So it makes the colors jump. And that's I think one of the reasons why people always talk about the colors of my painting. Okay. And they do jump. And actually it's funny, Steve, I'm sorry to cut you off, but believe it or not, we're almost out of time. <sighs> is there anything else that you'd like to add that I think, you think is critical that, I think that our viewers would be interested in? The main thing is if you have if you if you have this dream, pursue it. You only got one ride, go for it. And of course you gotta be lucky and you gotta have it helps to have a wife with a good job. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Steve. Thanks a lot to Steve Cook. This has been our Ventura TV. Thanks a lot for watching. Again, if you have any other questions or you want to see some of Steve's paintings, it's stevecookfineart.com. Thanks a lot for watching. Mm -hmm.